morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. It's a new week. It welcome is. to your new Metal Uno Breakfast Show. Wake up, my dear. Yes, it is. It's always fabulous to join you on a Monday morning. It is. Especially after such a long holiday week. Well, oh, it can't be a oh, weekend. It was the holiday week. Oh, more. Yeah. Those of you that didn't have to go to work on public holidays, yeah. how did you have two, uh, it was it was almost three weekends in one week. We exactly. started from Tuesday, it did. and then the fast I had to move, and then there was mm -hmm. Wednesday, there was Thursday, and let's suppose just to call Friday. Exactly. And then the Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, it was a whole week of weekends. It was a holiday. Mm. Uh, more excuses for the kids to eat all the food in your house. Ooh. We know that you're going to have to replenish <laughs> what's happening in that cupboard right now. There's someone That's... that comes to mind when you say that. What, what, what? Uh, my producer, Francis. Really? That comes to mind. <laughs> when you have but, no, I, I have to call Francis out this morning. <laughs> Francis was, uh, Francis owes me in Kobe. Wow. But you see, Francis went with his wife ah, yesterday okay. evening to chop in Kobe. Wow. And the one that is owing me. Uh, he didn't call me. Wait, I don't Francis. understand. Wait, I don't understand. Okay, His wife you. versus you. I don't get. No, I'm confused. Ah, Vegas, I was Vegas, supposed Vegas. to join. But so, Francis, he knows. Mm. Don't worry. I'll get you. But hey, come on. Welcome to the wonderful show this morning. My name is Mike Messicano. And I'm Titi Laya Oinson. We have the scintillating, the delectable, the darling, the luscious Winfrey. <laughs> yeah. Start of... The week, an mm. actual week, mm -hmm. a week, a walking week. <laughs> we walk. <laughs> and of course, it's amazing to be here this morning. You guys look amazing. Mike, there's something mm. you're not telling us. Yeah, Have you? Free. That, 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 yeah. Blush, that blush on you is giving. Yeah, yeah it <laughs> is. Blushing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but hey, come on, it's going to be a wonderful show. Remember, you can hit us up live. It's uh, yeah. TVC Entertainment underscore on YouTube, yeah. available on our app. You can download it on the Apple Store and, of course, uh, the Google Play Store. Indeed. You can also connect with us on social media. Please just look for us, TVC Entertainment underscore on X, on Facebook, on TikTok. What's the other one? Yeah, yeah on Instagram. LinkedIn, yeah. Instagram. Also, you can catch LinkedIn, us yes, there. LinkedIn, fantastic. Uh, oh, and of course, like we said, we're streaming live on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? If you're watching us on DTT, that will be 16 on Go TV. It's the Terrestrial Band Ultra High Frequency 49. Yeah. That will be if you are using an antenna, so you'll catch us there. So let's get straight into what we have this morning. Now, weaving together a combination of not just Afrobeat, high life, but also jazz. We have the amazing results of this energetic, uh, amazing composer, one and only Obong Etuk. And of course, there is going to be motivation this morning for La Daniela Delese will be with us. I'm talking about boosting your self-confidence. And as always, on Mondays, we have SME, Ola Tunji Ola Sehon of Hog Furniture is one of the fastest growing furniture businesses in Nigeria today. He's an educationist by profession, but currently recruiting and affiliate manager at Hog Home Office. Now we're gonna be finding out how much uh, goes into this kind of business and how we can probably structure something similar for ourselves. It's gonna be an interesting conversation. Yay. Good morning, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Hey guys, how was weekend? Mm -hmm. How was weekend yes. for you guys now? Yeah. 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 Your shoe, your shoe shine. shine. Yes, so let's hey. go. Put it back on for one of the good things. You're right. looking good today. Uh, 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 looking it's okay. good it's okay. today. It's a haircut. Someone else that was really looking good over the weekend, I was just driving past on the expressway, and I just happened to look left. Jesus. And I just saw Winfrey in all her glory on a billboard. Have you seen that billboard, Mikey? Massive billboard. Massive. When I saw it, it, I was where, where, where it's at? Literally, as you're driving into the, like, on the express towards the office. Yes. I, somebody literally told me, yes, I had no idea. Is it electronic? Does it switch or it's just... Uh, no, no, it's, no, no, it's just still. It's just, just her. Still. Ooh, and just it's, still. Humongous. it's humongous. Ooh. You can't miss it. <laughs> it lush, right? I had to yeah. drive from church over mm. there to yeah. literally go and see it. Yes. Oh, oh, it's this, beautiful. Though. It was this, nice. It was this nice. lush. We go, yeah. We go chop and pop you on top of this lush. So that was why I did that luscious thing in there. So you heard me when I said Yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, yeah, but what else? What else mm -hmm. happened to you mm -hmm. uh, with you this week? Over the weekend, oh yeah, so I've had my um, sister-in-law around and her two kids. So literally, it's been a full house. Oh, so it cooking, is. cooking, it is. chasing kids up and down. Oof. It was just a nice family time, really good yeah. family yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and of course, over the weekend as well, we had the um, um, the disability walk. 
put together by oh, Radio yes, Foundation. Oh, yes, you Saturday. did, you did. That was you amazing. were there, right? I was there. Mm. Saturday morning, it was a two-kilometer walk, literally mm. raising 20 million naira wow. um, to give amputees a shot at having prosthetic, prosthetic limbs. limbs. And I Fantastic. met Irede herself. Yeah. Such an outstanding young lady. She's so energetic, so, so beautiful. Oh, God. Yes. She has, she's written a book as well. Yes, she has, she has. She's, she's amazing. All right, we'll talk uh, more about that. I know there's a package coming mm, up yes, that mm -hmm. sometime mm. later on this week. Hello and good morning. It's time for a news update right here on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Tita Laya Oyinso. Thanks for joining us. Now, the Nigeria Safety Investigation Bureau has launched an investigation into the fatal boat accident of the Anam River in Anambra State on Wednesday last week. In a statement by the Director of Public Affairs and Consumer Protection, Bimbo Oladeji, the investigation will involve examination of the wreckage, uh, interviews with surviving crew members and eyewitnesses, review of operational procedures for the commercial speedboat, among others. Now, the NSIB says it will collaborate with relevant authorities, including the Marine Police Section of the Anambra State Police Command, maritime authorities, and industry experts during the investigation. Now, four persons were killed in the boat accident, including Nollywood actor Paul Odonwudu and three others. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has cleared the air over recent commentaries on the abuse of Naira, as well as its investigation into the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. Now, the EFCC says it will be re retrieving videos of Naira abuse and persons found culpable in new videos, and they will be invited for questioning. The statement also mentioned that at the moment of at that at the moment, the commission is investigating several celebrities involved in Naira abuse, and the EFCC will not relent in its operations. While commending the increased awareness among Nigerians, the commission wants the public, warns the uh, public to be wary of running afoul of laws against the crime on the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. EFCC says investigations into the alleged fraud have yielded the recovery of $32.7 billion and $445,000 so far. It also noted that discrete investigations by the EFCC have opened other fraudulent dealings involving COVID-19 funds, the World Bank loan, Abacha recovered loot released to the ministry by the federal government to execute its poverty alleviation mandate. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have seized a commercial bus conveying 3.2 million naira counterfeit cash owned by a pregnant woman and two other suspects who were also arrested. The operatives, in collaboration with men of the Nigerian Navy ship, also arrested another suspect along Lokoja Abuja Road and recovered 620 blocks of cannabis weighing 310 kilograms. In Cross River State, a 40-year-old widow was arrested at Basiedom Calabar for producing and selling a lethal new psycho psychoaddictive substance. 18 liters of the dangerous substance in used, in used paint drums were recovered from her at the time of her arrest. NDLEA officials arrested two suspects in Sabongari area of Kano with 900,000 pills of opioids. Other arrests and seizures were made in Imo, Ekiti, Edo, and Ogun, as well as Ondo states. Israel's war cabinet meeting has ended with no decision on how Israel will respond to Iran's attack. The cabinet says it is determined to respond, but will determine the exact timing and scope. More reactions are trailing Iran's overnight aerial drones and missiles launched at Israel in a reprisal attack after Israel's raid on Iranian consulate in Syria. It is the first such direct clash between the two enemies who have been engaged in a years-long shadow war with Iran using proxy forces. Iran's war cabinet is now debating whether to retaliate against Iran for its massive drone and missile attack overnight. President Joe Biden has continued to pledge United States unflinching support for Israel, 
just as UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak described Iran's attacks as an unnecessary escalation. And that's all we have for news and sports for this first hour of Wake Up Nigeria. But there is still so much more coming your way. Stay with us. Okay, so um, it's what's up and about. And quite an intriguing topic that we have this morning. Well, it's not a topic per se. It's a commentary yeah. on, uh, on happenings over the weekend. So, um, so Mike, yeah. uh, could, I, could I just take one second? Okay. Because um, uh, I, I have a huge smile on my face. No okay. birthday is it today, Titi? Amber and Ruby's oh, birthday. Oh, yeah, my God. girls, my daughters oh. turn 11 today. Um, happy birthday, Amber and Ruby. Ooh, my girls are getting so big. Um, may God bless you. God oh, keep wow. you and give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to continue to grow in God's glory. Amen. I love you, ladies. Beautiful young ladies. Oh, Amazing. they're 11 now. Like, no. imagine. All grown up. Imagine, I used to push them around in a, like a, in a cart before. Well, now, now, now they're the one pushing push me out of the house in the morning. <laughs> nice, nice. I just wanted to say happy birthday to my girls. Ah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Amber. Happy birthday, Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> okay. I wish you long life and prosperity. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so over the weekend, I, uh, I saw this. Uh, this just came up late last night, so this morning, of... Um, a church in Abuja. Uh, this is uh, uh, Pastor Paul in HS Church in Abuja. Where so a video had come up about him. Um, uh, should I say uh, he stopped a, a woman mid testimony that she was uh, lying, and hmm. he admonished and spoke about how uh, it was detrimental, even as far as saying things uh, about maybe how far he could go as far as. Her life or something, you know, he spoke about the dangers and how it was wrong and called her out in the middle of a testimony. Now, this is a very big church, yeah. you know, and, oh, and then everybody came out like, oh, oh, that was wrong because, you know, this thing about testimony, uh, you know, we call it survivorship bias and it can be fun because it can seem like, you know, at times someone can sit back and if you're not telling the truth, uh, it, 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 it could, yes, do ha have some effects. But then, yeah. uh, Later, it was now found out to be that this particular woman who gave this testimony wasn't actually lying. You know, mm -hmm. she, um, she spoke about how she got her law degree. Yeah. I think it came from where she was asked what degree was it. Mm. And she said BSc in law. Mm. Okay. Of course, you know that there are different, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. um, mm. if, it's, if, it's, NG, if mm. it's engineering, of course, it's not BSc, yeah. it's BEG. Yeah. If yeah. it's uh, a science course or something, mm. it's BSc. Uh, there's yeah. BA, and then for the legal terms, what do you call it? It's LLB. 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 For masters, it's LLM. LLM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for yeah. a doctorate, it's LLP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's JD, actually. Oh, yeah. okay. No, I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> so, I'll just play around there. So, know. so just because of the fact that she got that wrong. Yeah. But I. Okay. And so, so the thing was that it was let a let very public finish. calling. Now, this is about the biggest yeah. church mm -hmm. in. Yeah. In the, in the in the in maybe in the, the country it's been it's a it's it's huge. I wonder what would have happened to that woman. Yeah. Calling her out in that kind of way. In that manner. In that manner. <sighs> if I went to school. What happens to her face? You know you know what it is when uh, you hmm. when you so I, apart from going to uni I also went to open university to study mass communication and hmm. for, for a course of four or five years it depends on how you could spend a very long time. Yeah. It could be tasking because you are working at yeah. the same time. You're yeah. trying to school, you're trying to fend for yourself, you're trying to pay fees, you're trying to pay a lot of things. It can yeah. be really grueling and all of that. Yeah. You know, it's and for somebody to get called out in such a manner on a day when I wanted to give thanks to, to God. God. I'm thinking of the mental state yes. of such a woman. What would have happened? And then she was told to go sit down. Ah. Can imagine where hundreds, a hundred thousand people are like, oh, you lied. How would you even sit down on that seat? The people that are around you. I, I, I wouldn't do that. I would have left the church immediately. I would have walked right out wow, of the church wow, door. Like, That's one. The, you, but I, I'm even trying to think of the courage it takes for people to even come to the stage. Before you even come to the stage and stand beside a pastor and while you're giving your testimony, the nerves of people standing on that stage. That's in front of your friends, family. She dressed up for the occasion. She's 
She's just, she said she was the first in her family, family. To, graduate. to graduate. She started with that. She started with quite a lot of preamble. Yeah, and then, exactly. And I, in my and mind, I'm like... Is, we know the kind of society we are in. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know, people will call you that you are breaking... It was a yes, generation, wall, generation. generational courses or yes. something. You know how much it means to people when that kind of thing happens? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then uh, to, ah. think, to think that other people are watching with probably similar testimonies who didn't have the courage to or opportunity out. to come out and they hear such a thing from the pastor, do you think they will come out to give testimony of God's glory after that? Mm. I think they will probably want to keep it to their chest, which will now not inspire others to now push themselves to go and graduate, to go and do a course, to go and, you know, better their lives. That because is, they're like, you are LLB. pastor is not acknowledging are, me. Is it LLB? LLB, sure, BSC. LLB. But you know. <laughs> okay, so now this is what I have to say. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to play a little TT here and play a little. Wow, that that was advocate. Yeah. not going to play TT. You are going to play TT. Uh, uh, no, for me. Play TT today now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. My Don't play TT. Right, right, this is what I'm going to say, right? I mean, I'm not going to, 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 to school studying law in the University mm. of Benin for five years, mm. right? And then pre, pre, like going further to, to law school, right? I remember how strenuous the whole process went from day one. Yeah. Believe you me, I am not going to be mistaking what degree I'm coming out with. Okay. That is what I'm literally going to say. Okay. And it's a thing of pride, I know, for lawyers, mm. right? When they say, oh, yeah, what degree? Do you know how lawyers can be? Mm. Do you understand? So my point is that, mm. yeah, so that was mm. a very costly mistake. Mm. Of course, like, to air is human. Yeah. Normal. Do you understand? I'm not yeah. saying she didn't have it. I mean, it was proof. proof. I mean, there's proof. proof. There's proof. That yeah. she, I mean, came and everything. But then again, I totally understand the, the how it feels. Because to be honest, sometimes I'm at church, and then I see some, I'm, I'm the way some pastors literally refer, I mean, even refer, re connect with their audience, maybe yeah. when they're asking questions, Maybe yeah. like digging deep. And to be honest, sometimes I cringe. I'm like, oh, God, stop. Exactly. Yeah, like, people are here. Do you yeah. understand? But they're like, if you're bold, and I literally was having a conversation with my sister in law yesterday about the way some people were answering questions, the way some people were literally asking and pondering. Yeah. And she was like, see, if you are if you are bold enough to carry the mic, I say, oh, yeah, I want to answer. Whatever uh, they ask you, whatever, be ready yourself for it. Do you understand? Yeah. But then again, I totally understand because, I mean, th those are cringe worthy moments. Now, me playing the devil's advocate, as I said earlier, so A is human. Mm. And I will say I'll try to understand it from his point of view in the sense that, I mean, he's the steward over this house. Mm. And we all know that there are times where people come out to give testimonies that are yeah. not necessarily correct. To be very honest, right? Yeah. I understand she was full of gratitude. Yeah. That's, that was her point to deliver all of that and everything. But then again, we will not say that these things don't happen. Okay, you understand? So, and then sometimes like being a steward true, over true. that house, it is your responsibility to make sure that whatever goes out from your pulpit. Did he make so, you uh, so, so, so the issue, so the issue for me is- A huge stand, a huge platform, like, Wait. literally, should be correct. However, fine, the way he went about it may have not uh -huh. been the right way, Me. right? Uh -huh. <laughs> it may have not been the right okay, way. Okay, so I'm just but saying he I'll could have say... taken a chill pill, found out and come back, or just told her to pause and see him later. Yes. Or, this lady, or yeah, come to my, this come lady ask to see a deacon. This right. lady deserves you understand? A, an apology yeah, of as course, there's public. No there's yeah. no doubt. As this embarrassment. humiliation was. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt about that. There's I no deserve an apology as public. I wish I had more time to talk about it because there's still quite a lot I have yeah. to say, but oh, yeah. she deserves an apology as public as this humiliation. It is a costly mistake for of a man of God, is. though. It is. It is. Um, but but is we would love to hear your yeah, thoughts let's, let's on this. Let us know what you think. Just put it down, down in the comments, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll be back after this time out. Good morning. Welcome back. It's still Wake Up Nigeria, and it's time for us to take a look at what's happening on the covers of the dailies this morning. Mike, Messi, mm, Keno, and I yeah. are going to go through take these papers. Uh, we have the Nigerian Tribune with us starting us out. Now, today is Monday, 15th of April, 2024. Invasion of Oyo Secretariat, it says. Tied security in Oshun, Ekiti, Kwara, Undo, Ogun. Governors, police urge residents to remain calm, says no cause for alarm. Uh, Afeniferia, CCII, uh, others condemn attack. Now, the top left, it says uh, flight ticket war. Uh, Nigerians stand to benefit more, according to uh, stakeholders. It says uh, they want federal government to call foreign airlines to mm -hmm. order. <clears throat> LNG supply, shell tables, claims... Uh, against Venture Global, LLNG faces arbitration hurdles. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, there is a photo story on the uh, Israeli interception 
uh, of the barrage of missiles from Iran as they weigh options. Uh, Mike, I I'm not sure if you uh, were, were online at all when the news of the first set of drones um, coming from Iran uh, oh, went yeah, I over. Definitely, I definitely it was all over it, the yeah. news. Well, I definitely saw it, but uh, I, I would, I'm, I'm more concerned mm. a, a bit about uh, local matters. And that okay. would be, uh, you know, that, that story at the top, top uh, left corner of okay. the flag there says yeah. flight tickets yeah. war. Nigeria stands to benefit more. And you see, mm. no, in this case, it is extremely, what, what has happened over the past few weeks and months has, is, 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 is distasteful. Mm. We saw what uh, Alan Oyem of Airpeace did, you understand? Came into the, uh, the to to the UK uh, Nigeria UK uh, route, route, and yeah. then of course brought the prices down and all of that. And then these other guys, are what I would call sharks, the bigger ones in the business. What did they do? Some of them went as far as going even so much far lower, dropping to about four hundred thousand, even less than what he had he had come up with. Wow! And then people are you, you have to understand something about national pride. Mm -hmm. Look. These people come from outside. They have been fleecing. On, it is the, the price yeah. has been so high, so it's possible that their prices can be that low. And then you know what they are trying to do. You go and uh, patronize these ones. What mm. happens is that you want to try to run air piece out of that route, mm. and then they will go back to where they used to do it. Mm. We cannot let that happen. What we are seeing happen, it's it's business. It's business. Yes, yeah, sure. sure. But you see, like someone spoke about the Germans and Lufthansa. Sure. Someone spoke sure. about Turkey and Turkish Airlines. Yeah. As a stance now, we yeah. don't have a national carrier. Mm. The only thing we have that is Nigerian is air peace. Mm. I would want to say that yeah. in that particular manner. I mean, do you know you know what's been happening so, over the past so, few days with so, the dollar and all of that? Yes, the Where dollar has Nigerians dropped quite are, well. I would want to talk about this much more. Where yeah. even Nigerians are angry because they've lost money. There's been so much investment in the dollar. Yeah. Nigerians are now so angry from the foreign exchange down to crypto yeah, so, and all the rest. They're so angry now that the economy is even doing better. And I'm like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so definitely there, there are going to be people that will be upset that they've lost money. But the truth is, if you're truly in that business, in that space, you understand you're supposed to hedge against both sides in order to make sure you don't lose that money. That is a wise business but man, that, but, but that's the thing. Hedging, hedging, yeah, hedging, you understand? head against it. Hedging so once you it. notice fluctuations like that, you make moves, especially if it's about your business, your full business well, My point is movement. this, uh, look, we, are we I was going to say about it. <laughs> we're expecting it. The, I, I'm sure. I was going to say. But it's going to be less than a thousand very soon. And if it goes yeah. even lower. Yeah. If it goes even lower. That's I know, so much I, know, I know friends. I know people who have so much invested in the dollar. Yeah. Or more you will cry. <laughs> And I'm, 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 we are happy. We need the, in the next few next few weeks or so, mm. the fuel should come down because Dangote and Potaka they are coming up and all of that. Yeah, I'm even hearing good. the price at least it's it's at least the price of one derica of rice has come down at least. Whoa. It came down by about a hundred naira as at last week. Uh, I have someone that's just been monitoring and giving me updates. Yeah, so and I've been using derricas of rice and uh, price of milk in the market to sort of gauge. And yeah, hundred naira is shaving off some things. 59 is shaving off some things. Hopefully, even more will shave off things eventually. But the thing is, price wars are not new. Uh, there are price wars between uh, soft drink vendors, for instance, uh, brands. But, but you know, there's some price right wars now, that you know that is based morning. on competition. But this one, you know that they are yeah. trying to run somebody out of business. That kind of price eh. war. Is, eh, you know, but you know, you know there, there, are some, there are some cola drinks, for you instance, that we know is the same amount inside each bottle. Mm. And we know that the price can be brought down. We Maybe know I, it's exactly I, the I same like, thing. I like when we had Wake Up Extra. I wish we had Wake Up Extra. We'll take more time to talk about it. Yeah, but I'll say generally, the outlook is looking good. I like it. <laughs> Kudos to the economic team. It's it looking unlikely, but almost one time when dollar becomes 300 naira. <laughs> one of the highest happen. performing currencies in I the mean. world as at last week. So, hey, we hope for the best. Let's move on to uh, the Daily Times here. The Daily Times newspaper this Monday says publish loan agreements obtained since 1999. Um, Serap urges Tinumbu as president to establish an independent audit on spending of loans obtained by former presidents. Wow, that looks like a very deep investigation they're going to have to go through there. Um, now it says at the top, uh, army denies enlistment of repentant Boko Haram members into service, says soldier who murdered Miss Hawakulu Tabra is in detention and under probe. Uh, let's see what we have here. Um, it also says here, uh, 21 released girls came with 34 children, uh, according to the report on Chibok. 48 parents of abducted girls uh, die as a result of psychological trauma. It also says here, several cases of kidnapping instability persist with girls among those most at risk. 
Um, we mentioned this in the news update earlier. NDLEA recovers 900,000 opioid pills and 1,347.4 kg in seven states. Uh, let's see what we have here. Safe Schools Initiative, federal government to en engage hunters, vigilantes on intelligence gathering. And uh, right at the bottom, federal government needs Nigerian support to make lives better. Uh, let's see which other paper, which one would you like to take, uh, Mike? Uh, of every, uh, which one do you just... Okay, uh, we have, Times. Uh, that was Daily Times, okay, so we have this day. day. Right. Yeah, this day. Uh, power theft, destruction of electricity for facilities now carry three years imprisonment. Mm. Um, the Minister of Power was uh, on your view a few uh, days back. Mm. And of course, he has been in the firing line due to what has been happening in the power sector. Uh, for me, I would say, if I look at what it is, if ban is 20 hours, me, I'm on that band W or something. Because we, the light they are giving me, in fact, it was band W, it improved to band S, but it has come now lower. So, but then the, fire, the, the, the power minister has been in the news for quite a while, but uh, mm. uh, hopefully um, this kind of things. Mm. It's not easy because, you see, with what is happening now, yeah. you know, a number of Nigerians now said, look, you're going to see a number of people who will steal power because it's been happening. You're talking about unmetered households, over 5 million unmetered households, I think by the last count across wow. the country. Do you know what that means? Unmetered. Unmetered, 5 using... million that you are not mm. giving account for, 5 million of households who are not paying for power. Mm. Do you know what that means? And then you're talking about uh, uh, subsidies that are being ordered, even that the, subsidized, the, the, the subsidy the federal government is supposed to give, the federal government has not even paid. So imagine how much... Yeah. Five million households. Uh, so, so, so I, I have a feeling part of that particular number are people who have decided to not be on the grid at all. Um, in other words, uh, not use the national power grid at all. Some people have alternative sources of power who are not metered. Um, but I, I, I'm thinking it is a very large number and it has to account for a lot of wastage. We've talked about wastage uh, over time here on the show. Mm. Uh, the fact that people just don't switch off their lights when they leave the room. They leave everything on. It's, it's just not a culture that we're used to. Uh, we need to figure out a way to educate the people but If you're paying for better. your power and you yes. decide to turn it on and yeah. go out. Now you, Sabi, you will pay for it. <laughs> yes, you will pay for it. I mean, uh, the other time I, I have a friend who was in band A and it, she, before the, the announcement came on, yeah. she found out that the last, um, she would buy 30,000 naira. It would last for maybe two weeks to three weeks. Mm. 13 hours was gone in a few days. Wow. Almost, they were, I was going to visit them. They, they turned off the AC. Turn off Light was on. It was fun. They were sweaty. Wow. Why? Wow. Yeah. They could not pay 30,000 naira mm. in three days. You understand? Sure, sure. So if you have, if you are metered and you decide to turn on your light, no, continue. Mm. You are the one that will pay for it. But I'm just letting you know. Um, they change, you die for me in Nigeria, Nigeria. They switch to UK behavior once. <laughs> once you are, once you are regulated, ah. once you do, you will, you, you sure. will conserve. Sure. sure. I mean, for, you there will was conserve. actually a list. I think I posted it on the group, uh, one of our groups recently. Yeah. A list of um, how much, how many points each electrical appliance takes, takes in the house, yeah. from air conditioning to your pressing iron to even. Ah. Your, to your electric cooker and everything. So if you know you have all these appliances in your house, you should find out how many points it chops. <laughs> in fact, I have yeah. AC, AC went on for one hour, off the Funny enough, minutes. AC doesn't chop as much as some appliances. Uh, it's, it's so very funny. True. Very so true. funny. Very yeah. true. Uh, electric uh, cooker and all of that. Yeah. I own the AC. Yesterday, I like, oh, Benny, off this AC. You come now. Let farm be blown the water one that heater. Has water heater versus electric kettle, uh -huh. which one do you want to use? Let farm be blown. Uh -huh. <laughs> You use gas. Uh, at this point, um, we still have, I think, one more paper here with us. Oh, we have um, the new Telegraph here. Let's see what we have here. Let's see if I can spin this around. Um, humanitarian Ministry Probe. We've not dared anybody. Uh, it says here, um, apparently, celebrities being investigated over Naira abuse. Uh, discreet probes reveal fraudulent dealings when it comes to COVID-19 funds, World Bank loan, and Abacha loot. That was right. also in. Uh, now we have the Guardian, Guardian here. Yeah, sticky prices, poor control upset consumers despite stronger Naira. Mm. Uh, that's it. We've spoken about it. But there's one thing I know. I've spoken to the people. It was very easy to uh, to to jack up prices once you heard that dollar was going up. Ah, yeah. dollar is going up. Ah, yeah. you are selling fufu. Mm. Take it up. Dollar. How did dollar affect cassava? Ah, mm. okay. But the one that I know 
that it should come there is one once the fuel price comes, comes down. down. That's one. Yeah. Uh, because if, yeah. if I wonder how dollars affecting tomatoes and pepper, I do know how dollars affecting now. But now we are saying the same thing. It was very easy to use it as an excuse for things to go, but people are yeah. not happy. Okay, these things have come down. What is happening? Oh, some are saying I'm oh, using old stock. We old, old stock call. Stock mm. is new. Mm. Well, uh, it was, it's, <laughs> people use the price of pure water safe to to even monitor. Dollar. The dollar now, <laughs> but in the end, it is a cycle. We've we've talked about this so many times on on the show. Uh, there's a little bit of an infographic there on uh, tension in the Middle East as well. We've talked a bit about that um, as the conflict escalates amid the global markets. Now that also does affect the, the cost of the dollar, um, the the impact of the dollar to other currencies. To other countries, but then yeah. if you are gaining against the dollar for yeah. a country like ours, yeah. we are a major oil marketer. Yeah. In some ways, it should be good news for our economy. Why? Yes. Because those people who are supplying, who, who are dependent on the Middle East for their needs, who fall onto other places where you can get this thing and will be in some ways a sort of a boom yeah. if economically we know what we are doing. So in other words, tension in the Middle East should um, boost uh, business. In, in other in places, our, it's, I mean, it's, place. just, it's, yeah. just, it's very simple that way, you know. Well, at this point, let's wrap it up on the headlines in the dailies. We'd still love to hear your thoughts on these stories. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you see our posts. We'll be right back after this break. Keep your eyes on the stars, people. Keep your feet on the ground as we continue to take the right steps this week. AKA, yeah. your face. Winfrey, how did you yeah. <laughs> Oops. Your face, your shoes. Shoes. Your face in the stars, your feet on the ground, like yeah. she said. Welcome to the second lap. Of course, <laughs> undiluted family nourishment. Uh, exactly. It's uh, 45 minutes of what we have. We had a wonderful one hour. Yeah. And uh, there's quite a lot we've spoken about, but then it's going to be another wonderful 45 minutes. A lot of reasons to smile. We're alive. We're grateful. Yes, we are. Yes, yeah, so halfway, exactly halfway through the month of April. Ooh. Before you know, now hop, skip, and jump uh, may don't land. Too. Yeah, so 15th of the month. Imagine uh, that. You know, you know what just went through my mind? What? That's like 30 days of September. <laughs> okay, April 30. <laughs> so yeah, 15. Halfway, like she said. Exactly halfway. Oh. My name is Mark Mesikeno. And I'm Tite Laya Oing. So remember, you can use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TBC across all social media platforms to be a part of the best breakfast show on Nigerian TV. Okay, Winfrey has not uh, worked. This, <laughs> what, this wow. one, oh, you've not seen her so much. You think it's easy to look that good? That's okay. work. Uh, Tell him. Work. That's work. It's Tell work. him. Yes, so. Okay. I'm not only paid to speak, Mike. Uh, I'm to look good. To be here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. You are doing SME. <laughs> you are doing performance. <laughs> you are doing uh, motivation. All of that. To be here today. Yeah. Right. But then, hey, come on. You can watch us absolutely anywhere across the world via mobile app, which you can download via the Apple. Uh, store yeah. and the Google Play Store. Yeah, please sh send us shout outs, prayers, pictures, whatever you want to post. Just make sure you use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and tag us at TVC Entertainment underscore. All right, so the second lap will kick off with uh, a unique combination not only of Afrobeat, High Life, and Jazz, but also the ritualistic drumming of Ekombi. The result is urgent and highly energetic yet spiritual. His compositions reflecting his heritage, life, and philosophy of goodwill. For a musical performance, we yeah. have Obong Etuk. Earlier on, we talked about uh, the possibility of someone's confidence being completely shattered by a, a religious leader there. Uh, let's see what it takes to boost our self-confidence, especially uh, in different environments like that. Is it in the workplace, at home? On stage when giving testimony, mm -hmm. we'll have that conversation later on. Rest in the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh -huh. mm. And of course, we have SME or Latunji or Lashion of HOG Furniture will be here. I'll talk about uh, his business, of course, using it as some sort of a benchmark to teach us how to do business, to learn about the challenges of business and to grow in business. Thank you so much for staying with us. And Mike, I'm seated here now. Are you happy? <laughs> Anyways, right now, it's still a beautiful Monday edition of Wake Up Nigeria. And I have with me a very interesting personality who goes by the name Etuk Ubong. And is here to talk to me about his journey in the music industry as long as much as his philosophies and things like that. Welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you. Thank How are you doing this morning? Very well. Okay, I like your getup, by the way. <laughs> Thank I you. Like the fabric, seems very intentional. 
Right. So what would you say? What would you say your your style is? Uh, basically, think Africa, leave Africa, buy Africa. Oh, so. think African, leave African, buy African. Very yeah. simple, straightforward, and plays a very strong message. Mm -hmm. That's good. So now tell me. So now um, you literally um, are going to be performing a song for us later on today. Tell yeah. me about this. So what's the title of the song? The title of the song is um, Iko Ima Iko Fun, which I means um, song of love, song of friendship. Song of love, song of friendship. friendship. So is it song of love and song of friendship as we already know it, or is this something that have a deeper meaning? Uh, not at all, you know, just <laughs> surface just level. It is. Yeah. Amazing. So tell me, I mean, where did the music career start for you? Uh, for me, um, aside from my mom and the church, you know, uh, I was self-taught, yeah, aside with the conga drums, you know, and um, after one Sunday service, my mom took, to me, took me to the trumpet player in the church and she was like, this is my son, mm -hmm. I need you to teach him how to play the trumpet. Okay. And that's how I started. But I started pr playing professionally um, with Victor Olaya at Stadium Hotel. Um, then from there, I played with Femi Kuti for about two years at the Shrine. Mm -hmm. um, before I started my own band, the Ethic Philosophy, after I went to South Africa to study, I came back, I started my band, Ethic okay. Philosophy, and then um, I opened the Truth Village, you know, in Lagos here, yeah, somewhere around okay. Surulay, where I, I play two nights a week, every Wednesday mm -hmm. night and Sunday night. Oh, amazing. You know, Definitely um, would love to visit that. Yeah, you should. Soon, you should. I should, right? Yeah. Amazing. So now we talk about how a lot of people have, a lot of artists, let me say, right. have their foundation from the church, right? right? But along the way, some, yeah, some stay mm -hmm. in the course, but some literally go into other things. Now, you say you actually um, um, started the Etuk philosophy. Yeah. Etuk. So, and that is you, right? Yes, yes. Etuk, so your philosophy. So right. tell me about the Etuk philosophy. I mean, for me, I, it's, it's still like the basic thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like um, humans are distracted, you know, however, yeah. with Survivor, and then we forget about the need for us to make the world a better place, mm -hmm. you know. So um, the music, which is... Um, basically african oriented you know um which also reflects the african education aesthetics and all that you know so um with art music it's um and the philosophy how we can make the world a better place the world is distracted we are one people of the world and we ought to be responsible for the planet earth okay first you know there's so much destruction already we've caused a lot of harm okay you know, so it's more like um refreshing and trying to like remind you about the need to make the world a better place okay. where we can live in and dwell in okay so this philosophy what do you say is mostly influenced by africa africa yeah. okay okay in what sense because i mean we talk about i mean a, a lot of um a lot of lies have been told about Africa, okay. about who we are, mm -hmm. you know, have been exploited and all that, the mm -hmm. problems of Africa. Yes. And um, like I said, again, it's an education also. Yeah. Musically, we talk about the food we eat, um, how we dress, you know, how we've been exploited as well, yeah. the societal issues in Africa, the everyday life basically, mm -hmm. you know, the also how we live every day. How we live every yeah. day. Amazing. And I love the fact that you're actually focused on changing that narrative, right. right? And pushing the truth about Africa, about how strong and powerful we actually are. Now, let's go into your music. What right. would you say your music is? Well, how would you like? I mean, we know the general, I mean, when you hear it, you know yeah. Afrobeat, jazz, yeah. all that, right? But you, when you think about your music, mm -hmm. what do you want it to be? I want it to be, you know, on a very large scale, widely accepted. Okay. You know, just like uh, the Afrobeat, pop, you know. So I created this genre of music from the influences I've experienced and worked, you know, on, played, yeah. bands have played and people, musicians have experienced. Yeah. Um, Afrobeat, jazz, I like pop. You know, so so um, I coined this one at music, you know, music. yeah, because okay. of its um, rhythmic structure, you okay. know, um, which is quite unique. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I mean, like, the, the music being out there, and um, being widely accepted, just like Afrobeat, fellas like Afrobeat, Af yeah. Amazing. And I, I honestly cannot wait for you to actually perform. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward because you come across as a really spiritual person. Do you dance? Well. <laughs> well, okay. okay. Are you, hmm. uh, you know, you, something you like that. here uh, and there. Okay, yeah. I really can't wait for you to perform. Okay, now let's talk about, I mean, you schooling now. So you say you went to school in South Africa. Yeah. So what was that about? What did you study? Did you study, was it more music in class? Yeah, music, actually. Okay, music. Um, mm -hmm. Then jazz, um, jazz performance. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I studied in South Africa. Okay. South Africa was interesting, you know. Um, different culture exposed me and opened me up to how they think and their way of life there, especially about the African consciousness, you know because there was a lot of um, things talking um, influence of decolonizing the 
the syllabus in school. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was towards that direction, the time I was there studying. You were there. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful interview with you and uh, definitely we'll be able to get the message of your music right. during your performance right about now. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Now we're here to talk about self-confidence on motivation today. Uh, have you actually considered the fact that it's not other people that should make you confident in yourself, that you need to dig deep and find it yourself? But how do you begin? What are those pointers that we need to sort of build or boost self-confidence in ourselves? That's what we're here to talk about with Mr. Fola Daniels Adelisi, friend of the house, motivational speaker, writer, and so much more. It's great to have you back. Thank you for having me again. Mr. Fola, we mentioned earlier on the show today that uh, people's confidence has yeah. been bruised, yeah. uh, possibly by their own parents possibly. Uh, when growing up, yeah. uh, maybe in secondary school, yeah. maybe even at the tertiary level, yeah. OND, HND versus BSC, BA yeah. and the like. Um, how do we begin to build those blocks of self-confidence? Okay, so there are quite a number of ways to work on your self-confidence. The first and the most important thing is to note that what other people tell you is not as important as what you tell yourself. Okay. So the problem begins where, when you allow what other people tell you define what you're saying to yourself. Okay. If people say that you, you never do well, and you assimilate it and you begin to tell yourself, well, they said I can't do well, and yeah. so it means that I can't do well, it then begins to affect your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. But if people tell you you can't do well and you have made up your mind that you're going to prove them wrong, you realize that it's not going to affect your self-confidence. Well, for those who have had their egos bruised by their parents, it's a lot more difficult. It's not that easy. Some of them will need therapy. And some of them may not necessarily need it. They just need a change of environment. Okay. But for those who had it tough, they definitely need therapy to get out of that experience. And some people, a little trigger would even bring them back to that issue. So generally, anybody who has had a tough parenting experience, yeah. they would need therapy. And I recommend that they keep reading. They spend a lot of time uh, using positive affirmation okay. for themselves. So that will gradually help them out of that situation. But if it's not an issue of parenting, for some people, you just need to work on your personal hygiene True. to improve your self-confidence. Take, yeah. for example, okay. I know that when I wear something new, yeah. it's like I have new springs under my feet. Yeah. Like a new outfit. Like a new outfit. Yeah, or a new hairdo. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you see that when... Maybe a woman has a new stilettos. Yeah. It just feels different. There's a way you bounce differently. Yeah. You come to the office, if nobody has noticed it, yeah. you keep walking around. You guys, you notice this thing now. Mm. So one of the things you can do is to work on your personal hygiene. You probably want to take your clothes to the dry cleaners yeah. who can give you some starch and stuff like that. In mm. fact, there was, I remember working in an office. There's this guy, I remember till this day, we used to call him Egedun. Wow. Meaning okay. that he will starch up his clothes so well <laughs> that when he's coming, oh, his clothes, everything will stand like, ah, yeah. ah, guy, <laughs> calm down. But one thing I noticed about him was that his self-confidence was always very high. Okay. So if you work on your appearance, if you work on your oral hygiene, if you work on just looking good, looking yeah. nice, it without helps. even spending too much, it helps your uh, self-esteem. Okay. The other thing that you can work on is your knowledge. Because sometimes you get into a room and everybody is talking and it looks like they know so much and you realize, wait a minute, how come they know so much and I'm not able to say anything? So if you're not able to contribute, what you then need to begin to work on is your own knowledge. Nobody knows it all. Sure. You can begin to develop yourself in a field where they don't even know anything and begin to educate those other people such that when you mention something, they're wondering, what's he talking about? Yeah, and How they did you know that? Yeah. So they want to listen to you. Yeah. So it's important to work on your knowledge. And in that case, books will help you. Sure. Self-help videos on YouTube, on other platforms, they will help you. And in the workplace, there are... Uh, so we so can't we can even wanted, exhaust that yeah, one. So I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, you mentioned, we mentioned, we sort of bordered on bullying earlier yes, on. Yes, yes. Um, now, the issue of people noting that someone has a little less self-confidence yeah. in themselves and maybe taking advantage of, of that. that. Yeah. Um, 
when they eventually realize that, you know, they're in that kind of bullying situation and they're trying to be confident in themselves, even though maybe something they're even telling them is making them even question their own knowledge. Yeah. You mentioned reading books, yeah. but you're questioning your own knowledge in a field. Uh, where do you begin to get out of that? So the first thing you need to know about every bully is that the day you confront them, that's the end of the bullying. Okay. If, if, if anybody has tried to bully you, mm. the day you stand up to them, that's the end of it. Okay. And in the corporate world as well, somebody keeps telling you, do this, do that, do this, do that, and they're shouting at you, you just need to speak up just once. Wow. And that's the, you will notice that in most cases, it's the end of it. So it, it may take a while. You, you probably want to be sure that you have done the right thing. And what exactly is the cause of bullying in the workplace? For, for example, they tell you this person has a foreign degree. Yeah. This person just came back from London, yeah. from US, from yeah. Florida, from Canada, wherever. Mm -hmm. And they just automatically believe that they are better than you. I even had a personal experience. It was the employer telling me mm -hmm. from the first week of work, that this other guy has a master's degree from so, -so, so University in the United Kingdom. Mm. And I'm like, okay, so what has that got to do with me? Wow. Now, when it came to the time to perform mm. and to use some digital platforms to deliver for an event that we had in the office, the guy didn't know what to do. Wow, even so with the foreign degree. I came to the rescue. Mm. So from that moment, the person who had the foreign degree now started looking up to me. Okay. So that's why, that's why I said knowledge helps. Now, in the workplace, nobody can dispute results. Mm. So long as you're a performer, mm. it doesn't matter what they want to do. They will acknowledge the fact that you have the results. The fact speaks for themselves. As lawyers will say, arrest ipsa locutor. Mm. So if you are able to deliver results, yeah. your results will be a confidence booster. So what you then need to do is, what do I do in my office to deliver my KPIs, okay. to make sure that I'm hitting all my goals, I'm hitting all my target, yeah. whatever is expected of me, I'm able to deliver. Once you deliver, it boosts your self-confidence. I, I want to touch on, on this uh, workplace uh, imbalance that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. It can be an issue for confidence. Like uh, if, for instance, someone with an HND yeah. Uh, and someone with a BSc yeah. uh, probably in the same office. office yeah. And maybe one is given a higher position than the other. But it, in the end, the person with the HND might have this maybe lack of confidence yeah. based on that. Uh, despite you know, being a better performer. Exactly. Probably despite being a better yeah. performer. Yeah. Um, so what do you advise someone like that? Do? Quickly, the, the first thing I, like I said, your self-confidence should not be about what you have or okay. don't have. Okay. If you settle that with yourself, okay. you would never have problems in life because you realize that there will always be something that you don't have that someone else has. So if your self-confidence is in what you don't have, you would always have a problem. So let us first of all settle that one. Yeah, yeah. For example, there, there will be a kind of car that you have that I don't have. There will be a kind of house that you live in that I don't live in yet. So if my self-confidence is in external or material things, mm -hmm. I'm already in trouble. Mm -hmm. But that aside, we cannot deny the fact that these things are happening. So number one thing is that there are universities, there are institutions that help you to regularize your degree or can upgrade your degree to a BSc. Okay. I don't think you should neglect that op op option or opportunity. Look for any one of them. So upgrade your degree and you are at par with them. Okay. Particularly if you're a better, performance, a better performer yeah. or your performance is at par with that person. Sure. If your performance is at par or you're a better person, please try as much as possible, upgrade your degree. Okay. Then the other thing is take short courses. Mm. There are courses you can take online today that in three hours you're done, in four hours you're done. So if you have more certifications, more qualifications, it can be a confidence booster. But again, I always advise, make sure your confidence is in yourself, okay. not what you own. But for the purpose of qualification yeah. and promotion, yeah. take those external degrees. Okay, so I'm going to come back to what you own. Uh, we have um, a lot of Oambe parties over yeah. the weekend. Now there's a lot of clamp down on people yeah. that are spraying money, and uh, up, money up and down uh, at parties and all. But it used to be like a status symbol. Yeah, you know, um, And it's... In some cases, people with no degrees yeah. that were coming out to spray. Yeah. Uh, people with probably not much educational background in church, yeah. um, you know, giving the biggest tithes. Everyone's showing off and all that. Exactly. Um, but these people have, have boosted their confidence with maybe the finances. The material things. Yeah, so again, it, it's a show of low self-esteem. Wow. If everything you own depends on how much of wealth you can flaunt. Wow. In those parties, you realize that the biggest boys are always quiet. Mm. I've seen people with a lot of money drive very small cars. Mm. 
I've seen people with a lot of money that you look at them, you never can tell what they own until you get to know them or go to their estate and see what they control. Sure. And years ago, I even my own dad was driving a Volkswagen Beetle. Mm -hmm. But his clients would laugh at him and stuff like that until the day they want to come to his house. Wow. And the first thing they see is that it's his name that is on the street. Wow. And they are shocked. They think wow. he's making a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. That's where I live. Wow. And then they come, they see his house. That so is. you should never allow what you own externally to <laughs> determine your self-esteem. If that is the case, there's a problem with your self-esteem. You should be able to stay quiet in a room mm. and allow your achievement speak for itself without you shouting. Hopefully, we've been able to give you a few pointers on building your self-confidence today. Hopefully, you've taken some notes, you've jotted some things down. Thank you so much, Mr. for coming to talk to us. Share your thoughts with us. Use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and let us hear them. Let's take a quick break. There's still more coming your way on Wake Up Nigeria. All right, so we have quite an interesting interview this morning for SME, and I'll tell you why it is. It's the story of evolution and adaptation, and that is why it is interesting. Well, Latin Joe Lassen of HOG Furniture, one of the fastest growing furniture businesses in Nigeria today, is here. It is great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you. You're the project Thank manager you. of HOG Furniture. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank wonderful. you for it having me. It is great. It is great to have you. So, what what, what is uh, what is HOG Furniture all about? Uh, yeah, HOG Furniture is strictly an online marketplace for okay. furniture, furniture and decor accessories. We've been in the business over a decade ago, satisfying Nigerians, you know, bringing the decor fantasies to reality. Mm. And uh, so far, it all started actually in 2009 when the company was incorporated. We started as a brick and mortar. Uh, as time went by, uh, we actually uh, influenced by a uh, parent company, Banner Plus, that there's a need for us to digitalize our sales channel. At uh, that moment in time, you know, we only do brick and mortar. People come to buy imported furniture from us and all that in-house production. Okay, just but like a warehouse a, 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 a physical store. Eggs, physical store. Like, exactly. So as time went by, precisely 2015, it really became strictly an e-commerce. You now that's the thing. I, I want to hammer on this point. That okay. evolution, or I should I say adaptation, as yeah. where why did HOG see the need? Because, you see, we have a lot of businesses in Nigeria here mm. who still practice that principle, like you mentioned, brick and mortar, mm. and they love the physical presence, but everything, the world is being digitalized. Exactly. People are moving. Exactly. Why, how did you, and why did you see that need and decide that, okay, let's uh, pivot over to uh, an online space? Yeah, it, it was a story of ideation level mm. uh, to the level of uh, uh, tentative action. Okay. Our tentative action was uh, starting as a brick and mortar. Mm. But where we are going is actually e-commerce. Mm. But we started first with that. Like I rightly said, our parent company, Banner Plus, influenced us. Mm. That yes, uh, uh, at a particular point in time, our parent uh, company signed up on a big e-commerce platform after mm -hmm. that time. In fact, they were given one of the best sellers on the platform. So it triggered us like, wow. So if people are doing this, that means we can we can do something magic with this. Mm. Then we take we took that boost step, you know, create a niche in furniture and furniture. Mm. You know, as at that time, by 2015, when we were, we were full e-commerce, we still created a structure to allow to accommodate for different sellers to sign up on the on the platform, and uh, it has been awesome so far. And as so you're saying that you want some some sort of an agency way, such as sellers and buyers. You are exactly exactly uh, yeah. Units where sellers and buyers meet. Ex exactly. Oh, but it's all based on furniture. Yeah, on furniture, home office and garden furniture. Uh, and aside that, we also do bespoke pieces, by the way. Okay. And uh, yeah. So uh, when now, when if somebody wants to order a bespoke, are you you are, are you talking to this company or you are talking to a vendor or something in? There, the, there you go. This is the loophole. We talk of e-commerce uh, sector in the country, yeah. and uh, it's bringing more challenges to the mm -hmm. sector. Uh, when uh, a company is so machinist, you know, you want to recruit sellers on the platform, uh, but uh, you now leave the so-called customers, prospective customers, you know, you leave them in the hands of this seller. You know, the seller will come on your, on your site, you only place another. Nobody's communicating. There is this. There is no woman-like communication, mm. no woman agent, I call. Mm. A customer care to relate, to be so thorough on that particular order. Reason why you, you, the reason why this cliche of what I ordered versus what I got. What I got, exactly. Is, so you are talking to a bot. You are just something. talking to a chat box. Mm. You are not talking to a woman being, woman you know, being. that we, you know, let you know that, like our culture, you know, furniture, we let every other seller know that, yes, as we need you, we also need these customers. And for the business to thrive, 
these are the do's and don't. Don't take e-commerce as a signpost. Mm. What you don't have, take it down. Mm. If you have this particular color on the site, let it be. If you don't have it, take it down. Mm. So it, there will, there, it will not be an issue of, I'm placing another for this, and they told me it's, it's, not, it's no longer available. But if that happens between yeah. a, 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 cost, a, a vendor on the site and a client, mm. is there any sort of, uh, uh, do, do, you, do you implement any sort of, is there any sort of, uh, I don't know, are there checks and balances to ensure that that kind of thing, you know, maybe a, 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 a punitive measure or something? Is there anything you do? Yeah, yeah uh, before I answer that, uh, uh, for a customer to come to our site and say, it will be furniture to see you, let me place another. We, every other coming in, you know, uh, there's somebody there to, you know, uh, to, uh, to check that order, converse with the seller and as well converse with the customer. So mm. there would not be an issue of, uh, you know, uh, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what is, you know. So there wouldn't be. And in such case, it, it really happens with us. Okay. Because at the back end, there is human agent handling that order. Okay. You know, on behalf, as you are safeguarding the interest of the seller, we also safeguard the interest of the customer. Now, this, the next question that you know people ask is that, are, they, are, the, the, are there fees to the e-commerce company? How do you make your own money? Is it from the vendor, from the client, or how? Of course. Uh, from the from the vendor, from okay. the seller. From yeah. the seller and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, we know, talking about, you've mentioned about some challenges with mm, yeah. e-commerce. Now, yeah. as a country, yes, we know that, you know, you have issues with uh, internet supply from the ISPs and yeah, all exactly. of that. What other challenges have you encountered working in uh, yes, you know, the digital space? Yes, of course. Taking into cognizance mm -hmm. the infancy state at which e-commerce sector is in the country, forget about the noise, uh, mm -hmm. this and that. It's still at its infancy level. And the challenges are... Uh, number one for me is, I say, it's a trust issue. Mm. Yeah, customer will say, hello, HOG, please, I need this. Can you deliver to my location, Naba? Okay. Moving from Lagos to Aba. Oh, Aba. On payment or delivery. Huh. <laughs> you know <laughs> that? <laughs> on but, payment or delivery. You, so, see, you see, that that thing has made a number. <laughs> I know, I cannot mention some brands that have, that have run out of business because of POD. You exactly. get there and the person say, ah, this is uh, not what I want. This is not what I want. Meanwhile, uh, expenses have been incurred. Exactly. When it comes to moving it out. Oh, this account is all those expenses. Expenses is going to take, it has yeah. moved out of a factory. Somebody has yeah. you know, transportation and all of that. Yeah. And when this happens consistently, exactly. you're going to run somebody out of business. Yeah, exactly. And, and second, and secondly, uh, second challenge that I see is that uh, uh, the overzealousness of uh, uh, different states. Uh, agencies on the highway. Oh, yeah, that, it's also uh, it's also one way or the other like mitigate a smooth running of commerce in the country because for a driver moving from point A, let's say for instance moving from Lagos to Aba, you know before I get to Aba, I must have you know uh, got into a part different different states. So a different agency will tell you uh, this uh, this paper will take you all over Nigeria. Once they get to point B, another. Another payment again. What's the point? So I saw, it's, I saw a it's video affected. of somebody of uh, uh, I think it was tubers of yam from Benue State. He was coming to Lagos, and this guy had over twenty to twenty-five different bills or receipts or invoices. I'm telling I said, you, the I'm food telling is actually you. the food. <laughs> the food is actually not so expensive. Mm. By the time I put in all these costs, mm. it gets to the end consumer. Exactly. And so that is also a challenge. Uh, another challenge there is insecurity. But we thank God for the dispensation of government that we have presently. Mm -hmm. A big shout out to the federal government. You know, we can see that they've been able to doze the threat of insecurity, insecurity. in the country. Yeah, yeah. So it's getting better. They can On still... a normal day, if things were okay, yeah. night time would have been a wonderful time to transport. Exactly. Those, but then those, that's the time when it, is, it, can, it, can, it can be uh, problematic. So uh, moving forward, I, one, one thing I like about HOG is that the ability to adapt to where as times were. Looking exactly. on the horizon, what, what would you say is uh, an impact or important factor of business that HOG holds on to that would still make you relevant in the next, say, 5, 10, 15 years? Mm, uh, uh, we are very thorough in, any, every, any, in anything we do. We are very, very thorough. And uh, uh, our mission is that, uh, to become one of the you know, our top e-commerce in the country, and not even the country alone, mm. the whole world, you know, exactly. setting, setting the standard, okay. sanitizing the sector. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, if we throw on that part, uh, I'm very sure that, yes, in the next year, <laughs> years to come, uh, I'm very sure some we are going to grow bigger than this. Final words, with all the experience that you have from HOG, to somebody who wants to start up 
a business to pay pivot mm. to online services? Well, what, what just, what's that one advice that you can give to somebody out there? Uh, well, the advice I can give is uh, uh, yeah. no business, you know that any business that want to succeed in this country that we are, mm. that want to thrive, uh, must look for, you know, uh, taking into cognizance how Nigerians are hard working. You need to look for ways to make the life of these people easier on a daily basis. Okay. You know, you have to look for ways, you know, to solve a particular problem. You know, if you're be able to, uh, definitely your business will grow. And this is what Hitoji you have been doing. Find the need that you meet it. Well done, Hitoji, and uh, this you. is uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank all right, that's it. I hope you were able to pick up one or two things from our SME. And that's the end of the show this morning. Of course, uh, Titi and uh, Danny, who, of course, is sending me a, a paycheck this morning. She knows why she would send that. Danny. When am I getting my paycheck this morning? You mm. get it, don't worry, Mike. You get it. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> Good. It's been a marvelous Monday, yes? It has been. It has. I want yeah. to say a big thank you to everyone who mm. joined us as guests on yeah. the show. Mm. And to you watching, <laughs> we love you. And one more time, a big happy birthday to my girls, mm -hmm. Amber and Ruby. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Mommy loves you. Daddy loves you. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Small chops and cake coming your way. <laughs> and coming our way. I didn't know you eat small chops. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye.